All right, today, if you look at your digital interactive notebook, you're in class, I'm just showing it on the screen. We have completed through slide 13. We are actually not going to do slide 14 today. We are going to skip these and go to actually slide 19. If you're in class, you have the paper for this. So we are going to solve equations with variables on both sides, and we are going to talk about some special cases. So let me show you my oval. Make sure your name is on here just in case it gets lost. So let's look at the steps for solving equations with variables on both sides. We've already been doing this, but now we're going to deal with some special cases. So there can be many steps involved when solving equations with variables on both sides. So step one, eliminate any parentheses on either side of the equation by using the distributive property. So we're going to solve this. We're going to follow it step by step. So let's draw a line down the equal sign. <coughs> So first step would be to get rid of the parentheses. So in this case, we are going to distribute the positive 4. So we have negative 8x. 4 times 1 is 4. 4 times 5x is 20x. So that is step one. Step two is combine any like terms on either side. So on the left side, we need to combine the negative 8x and the positive 20x. 20 minus 8 is 12, so it's 12x plus 4 equals negative 6x minus 14. Then we've talked about moving the smaller x value to the other side. So this negative 6x is your smaller one. So to get it to the other side, we do the opposite, which would be plus 6x. Put it underneath the other, or the like term. Negative 6 plus 6 is 0, so we can cross them out. We get 12x plus 6x is 18x. Carry down the plus 4. Carry down the equals negative 14. <clears throat> then we need to use, so step 4 says use in operations to move all the constants to the other side. So we're going to subtract 4. We get 18x equals negative 18. Only with the variable. With the other number, we just want to get the other number on the opposite side of the variable. Good question, though. So if the x was on that side, we would subtract that one? Yes. So... If we had the 18x over here, I would add the 14 over here. Okay. You just want to move it so that your x value is by itself on one side or the other. So the this is kind of like your one step e, or two step equation here. You need to get x by itself, so that means we need to move this positive 4. We do that by subtracting. And then we divide by 18 on both sides. So negative 18 divided by 18, negative 1. Yes, so now we need to check. You plug it into the original equation. So when you check, I do want you to write down what you're putting in the calculator. So it's negative 18 times a negative 1. Negative 8. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> And then plus 4, parentheses, 1 minus 5 times a negative 1. 
close the parentheses. Oh, there we go. So glad y'all are paying attention. Because I would have had the wrong answer. Okay. Well, hopefully, so it'd be negative 8 times the x plus 4 times 1 plus 5 times the x equals negative 6 times the x minus 14. And so we put this in exactly as it appears. If it equal, comes out to equal 1, then that means it's true. If it's 0, it's false. So the one means it is true. So we can put a little check mark showing that we checked it. Have you all checked it and come out with zero before? Yes. 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 So then what do you do if you come out with a zero? I start crying. <laughs> you start crying. And then after you stop crying, you go back and see where you made the mistake or rework the whole problem entirely. Retype it. Okay, let's go ahead and look at the next page of our foldable. It says special cases. So there's actually an answer that is no solution. It's kind of like saying no answer. That means that if you solve the equation, there is no value of x that will make that equation true. So we get the word no solution. We can write that as a symbol with a zero with a slash through it. That means no solution. No value of x. Is will make it true. We can also get infinite solutions. That means that no matter what you put in X, it'll always be true. And that you can write that as all real numbers with the little R with the extra little line, or as the infinite infinity sign. So those are two ways to say you have infinite solutions. So we have symbols for all of this. So let's see, how does no solution even come about? So let's look at what it says. When you solve an equation with variables on both sides and eliminate the variables completely, leaving an untrue statement, the equation has no solutions. So if we look at this problem, it's already worked out for us. Step one was distributing the two. And that came out with 8x plus 10. Look at both sides of these equations. 8x minus 6 equals 8x uh, plus 10. They both have 8x. They both have 8x. But in order for it to be the same, you have to add or subtract the same number. These don't. So then whenever you subtract 8x, it actually zeroes out on both sides. And you're only left with negative 6 equals 10. But that is a false statement. Negative 6 does not equal 10. Therefore, the equation has no solution. So we would write a 0 with a slash through it. So it's whenever the answer just comes up with something that's untrue? Yes. That's when it's just at, Exactly. When, whenever you come up with something that is untrue. And also the x's had zeroed out. So all that's left are two constants on both sides. Okay. Yes. Is there any way to like check this? Because sometimes I like sometimes I work out wrong, and so yeah, if you work out wrong, then you're like, oh no, it's false. And then you get it wrong. Is there any way to check it? So, um, please don't get it wrong. I'm trying to think if there's any way to check it. 
You could put these into y equals y1 and y2 equals, and it'll show you that you have a parallel set of lines that do not intersect. So if you graph it into y equals, let's go ahead and do that so y'all can check it that way. So go to y equals, clear out whatever is in there. You're going to put in the left side in for y1, the right side in for y2. Wait, how do you do graph? Go to y equals first. So then on the left side, you're going to put ax minus 6. X is up here. X, do y'all see where X is? Yes. Okay. So 8X minus 6 is Y1. And then arrow down to get to Y2. And then put in the original. So 2 parentheses, 4X plus 5. Close the parentheses. Why don't you get all the numbers in there? How do you get rid of all the other numbers? Clear. Go to where it's at and hit clear. Okay, so do you have Y1 in there? Do you have Y2 in there? Okay, now you're going to go to graph and look at what we graphed. Oh, that's awesome. Wait, so my calculator is telling me. And then the other one is this one. Two parentheses, 4x plus 5. So if they intersect, that's true. If they don't intersect, it's false. So if they intersect, um, hold on, these will be parallel. Parallel means no solution. So if they are parallel, that means no solution. If they intersect at one location, that means you can solve it and there is a solution to it. Whenever it, so we'll look at the next one also. Pretty cool how you can check it. I hadn't thought about that before, so that was a great question. All right, so let's look at the other one when we have infinite solutions. Clear out the memory and try again. But just wait. Let's look at the next one. Okay. okay, when you solve an equation with variables on both sides and eliminate the variables completely, leaving a true statement, the equation has an infinite number of solutions. Okay, so if we look at this one, the left side's actually the, the exact same as this one, but the right side's different. So we distribute the two. We get 8x minus 6 equals 8x minus 6. The 8x is 0 out. And we're left with negative 6 equals negative 6. That is true, right? So that means infinite number of solutions or all real numbers. So I'll show you how to put this one in and what you get. So the y1 is going to be the exact same. So we're going to put this in for y1, put this in for y2. So I'm just going to change this to minus 3. Make sure you use minus 3 and not negative 3. Remember the trick I showed y'all uh, the other day? If it gives you an error, you click go to so you can find out where your mistake is. Okay, whenever you graph it, watch what happens. It's blue, and then what happens? The red goes over over it. So they're the exact same. So same line means infin infinity. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So you just have to look at it going over the top of it. It doesn't show it. And it won't show it. Like, like the color ones show you it, but I do have color ones in these boxes that y'all can use. What you can also check if you're at home, if you go to the table of values, which is second graph, look at the tables. Oh, 
The tables are the exact same too, because if the graph is the exact same, so is the table. Wait, where's the table? Second, second graph. Second graph. Oh, okay, that's cool. So you can check it even if you don't have the color one. Okay, I'll look at it. All right, so now I want you to do these examples, and then we'll go over it together as a class. Wait, do we have to try to work it out? Yes, I want y'all to work it out. And then remember, the calculator is just to help you check it. It is not to give you the answer. It is only to help you check your work. Okay, y'all can continue on, but I am going to go ahead and work this out. So in case you need to see it worked out, I'm going to do that right now. There will be some answers. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just making sure. It's to give you a mix of it all. Okay. Huh? See, I got to. Oh, I didn't get to. If it's parallel, then it's false. <laughs> I don't know what this is. Okay. So the first one is false, so it's a no solution. <laughs> Because negative 12 does not equal positive 12. Oh, it's negative, that's what it's called. Oh, I wrote that down. No wonder. It's because hers came out like this. Okay, so I started the next one. I've combined like terms. I have a negative 2x plus, that should be 22, right? Equals negative 5x. Plus 46. I want to move the smaller one. Which one's smaller? The negative 2 or negative 5? Okay, so we need to add 5 to both sides. 5x. Oh, I messed up my negative That's 3x. Okay, I did this right. Plus 22 equals 46. Minus 22. 3x equals 24. Divide by 3. x equals 8. So it's okay that I got an answer. Because it's just going to include no solution and uh, infinite solutions. So you do need to check. 16 minus 2 times 8 plus 6 equals 38 minus 5 times 8 plus 8. <laughs> So it checked out. How do you go back to uh, just like the regular? Second quit. Quit is right beside the second button. Oh, yeah. Also, some of these questions can check out. Okay. Yes. Hey, y'all keep on going. Okay. I have started this one, so I'm going to finish it. So I need to move the smaller one over, so it'd be this negative 8x. So I do plus 8x to both sides. So then I get 45 equals negative 3 plus 8 is a positive 5x plus 5. Then I need to get x by itself on this side, so I need to get rid of that plus 5 by subtracting 5. So I get 40 equals 5x. Divide by 5. So 8 equals x. You do need to show checking your work.
I do need to finish this last one because we are almost out of time. So on the left side, we need to combine like terms. So I'm going to get that 10x and that 2x together, making it 12x plus 6 equals. I'm going to distribute that positive 6 to everything. 6 times 2 is 12x. 6 times 1 is plus 6. Then get the x's on both uh, sides. So I'm going to subtract 12x. And that zeroes out, leaving us with 6 equals 6. So it is true. So we have infinite number of solutions. And remember, you can check it in your calculator. And it will be the same line, same table. Yes, or you can do like this. Yeah. Yes. So if they both cancel out, because I'm gonna leave it just like that. If if you want to, if I, what do I get? I get zero equals zero, which yeah. that is also true. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it's just an R with a line. Yeah, it's just an R with an extra line, and it means all real numbers. All right, your assignment today is just Ed Puzzle. I need y'all to stop moving. You're going to watch the video and answer the multiple choice questions. It does grade you. So you need to make sure you are listening. And if there's problems that you need to be working out, you can work it out on a scratch sheet of paper. But make sure it's just to reinforce what we just learned today. Because tomorrow we are going to do an assignment. Glue it in your journal. Yes, on the next page.